So this was one of the questions from the homework that you guys wanted to talk about because it was difficult because it asked about a range of particular values. So I am just going to read through the question nice and quick. Um, we've got a box of mass 0.5 kilograms. So I'm going to add that immediately to my diagram of 0.5 g. It's on a plane which is inclined at an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal. The coefficient of friction between the box and the plane is a fifth. So mu is a fifth. Better add in my normal reaction to... The box is kept in equilibrium by a light string which lies in a vertical plane containing a line of greater slope of the plane. All that means is the string is going directly up the slope. It's not going at like a wonky kind of angle, just so it looks like it does in 2D. The string makes an angle of 20 degrees with the plane, as shown in the diagram. The box is in limiting equilibrium and may be modelled as a particle. The tension in the string is T newtons. Find the range of possible values of T. Now, I'm actually going to change some of the wording here, because I think when we did this with the other group, we realised some of the wording was a bit mis misleading. So I'm just going to say that the box is in, it's in equilibrium and that it may be modelled as a particle. And we want to find the range of possible values of T. Now, the reason there's going to be a range is because if you imagine this box and it was on a steep slope and you were, the, you were the string and you were trying to pull it, you could pull it really, really, really hard and it would start moving up the slope, okay? So we're trying to say what's the biggest that you can pull it so that it is just about to move up, so it's in limiting equilibrium moving up. But what's the other way that it could still be in equilibrium if you weren't pulling it really, really hard? If you were kind of like holding it in place, let's say you're really weak and it's about to start slipping down the plane. And if you reduced how much you were pulling it up by any more, it's going to start slipping down the plane. What do you think is the most important thing you need to think about between those two scenarios? Which way friction is going? Which way friction is going? Because one of them we've said it's about to move up. The other one we've said it's about to move down. So that's where the, t the range of values is going to be created because the maximum value of T is when it's on the point of moving up, so friction down. The minimum value of T is when friction, uh, sorry, it's about to move down, so friction will be up. So we can start off by just thinking about it on the slipping up the plane. So we've already got our diagram, actually. Why don't I just use this one as our slipping up? So if it's slipping up, we're going to have friction going down the plane like this. And we're just going to resolve the forces. So we get this splits into 0.5g cos 40 and 0.5g sine 40 down the plane. And that's still going to split into your t cos 20 and your t sine 20, as usual. Same old things as we have before. So I'm just going to do my simplified diagram. You may not need to, but why not? Let's just do this. Forces going up from the plane, you have r and you have t sine 20. To the right, you have t cos 20. Down, you have 0.5g cos 40. Left, you have 0.5g sine 40. And you also have a fifth r. Um, so we know that it's still in equilibrium. It's in limiting equilibrium. So we should, which should we look at first, up and down or left and right? Up and down. We'll look at up and down, and we'll find out what r is equal to, and then we can substitute it in there, and we can find out what the value of the tension is. Okay? When you do that, you'll come up with whatever the value of tension is. I'm actually not going to do all of that, because I think we've seen that many, many times before when you've done the homework. And I think the tension comes up as 3.78, was it? 3.87. So when you actually finish solving this by first of all resolving it in that direction and then resolving it in that direction, when you solve the equation, you get that t is equal to this. Now, if it was going to be slipping down the plane, what did we say would change about the diagram? Just the friction. Is anything else going to change? OK, so we're then going to have another diagram where we're still going to have the r, the t sine 20, the t cos 20, but the friction is going to change because it's about to slip down, so the friction is now going up the plane. So going down here, you have 0.5g cos 40, and you have going over here 0.5g sine 40. You then do the same process of resolving perpendicular to the plane, and you find out what r is equal to. You then substitute it in this side instead, so you're resolving it along the plane, 
and that will tell you that t is equal to 2.3 something. You didn't do that part. Should we just do that part then, or 2.75? So we then, when you do that process, hopefully that process makes sense. What I'm saying to you, right? You just are gonna say this one equals this, find out what R is, substitute it in there, this one equals this, find out what T is. So you get these two values of tension and it makes sense for it to be on the point of slipping up the plane, you're having to pull it harder. If it's gonna slip down the plane, you have to pull it less. So that's the reason I got rid of this word limiting equilibrium here because actually, if the value of the tension was 3.1 newtons, it wouldn't be in limiting equilibrium anymore. But for it to be in equilibrium, it could be in between those values. So my answer to the question is that the tension has got to be less than or equal to 3.87 and greater than or equal to 2.75. So if the tension were 3 newtons, what can you tell me about the particle? <coughs> if the tension were 3 newtons? No moving. No moving. It's not in limiting equilibrium, it's just in equilibrium. So when it's inside this middle section, it's in equilibrium. This end here, it's in limiting equilibrium moving up the plane. This end here, it's in limiting equilibrium moving down the plane. That's why we get this range of different things that can happen here. And the reason we came up with this range is because it's saying that it's staying in equilibrium. You need to pause and think, okay, well, it's asking for a range. I wanna think, what about if it was really big? What would happen? What about if it was really small, what would happen? Mechanics is one of these questions where, yes, there are parts of it that just follow, draw a diagram and work it out, but the beginning part is where you have to pause and you have to think. That is where mechanics will separate the people who are good at mechanics and the people who aren't good at mechanics, the people who will pause and think about things. The other question that we wanted to talk about that I, I wanted to mention in question 13 I think people will have found this hard, um, it is here, okay? I'm gonna split this into two pieces. I imagine if you found this one hard, it's because you had mu, p, r, you had so many unknowns in the question that you were doing. And I've drawn a line here because this is actually a two-part question in disguise. It says, to begin with, a particle of mass two kilograms lies, sorry, two kilograms rests in limiting equilibrium on a rough plane angled at theta degrees above the horizontal where tan theta equals three quarters, finished. It's, at the moment, it is in limiting equilibrium. What else do I need to add to this diagram? <coughs> the friction, and which way would the friction be going, Anika? Yeah, the friction's gonna be going up the slope like this. So in this diagram I've got here, I've got no P. I've, there's nothing at all to do with the force of P at this point because it's not even said anything about P. It's told me it's in limiting equilibrium. With all of these unknown things that I've got here, what do you think I might be able to find out? Mu. Good. I'm going to, for this beginning part, I'm going to find out what mu is equal to. And then, for the second part of the question, it says a horizontal force of magnitude P newtons acting into the plane is applied to the box. So there's going to be a new version of the diagram where you've got a horizontal force P and you've got your normal reaction and you've got 2G. And it says, given that the box remains in equilibrium, find the maximum possible value of P. So is there anything else that's going to need to change about this second diagram? The friction. The friction. What's going to change about the friction? It's going to go down because it's the biggest value of P that's pushing really hard. So the friction is now going to flip and it's going to be mu r in this direction. But remember, you've just worked out what mu is in the first part of the question over here. So this question is now just in terms of p and r, but you can put it all together um, and it just will, it will give you your values of p there. So actually I'm not gonna do the question here. I know that someone in the other class found this difficult because they just did this diagram. If you didn't do this diagram, you can't do the question. That diagram comes from the first sentence about it being in limiting equilibrium. It's then in a new type of limiting equilibrium in this second scenario that we have here. Okay? So, um, we'll have a look at some different...